Alright, so Ben and Jerry's decided that they will no longer be selling their ice cream products in occupied Palestinian territories. And this is pretty big for a number of reasons, obviously on this channel. One of the main things that I call for in response to the ongoing apartheid and the ethnic cleansing of the Palestinian people by the government of Israel is uh, BDS, is Boycott Divestment Sanctions. This is the exact same strategy uh, that worked in apartheid South Africa. And so it makes sense that we would apply the same strategy uh, towards the state of Israel as they are continuing to conduct these human rights abuses, these crimes. And so I think it's a good thing that Ben and Jerry's is doing this. Now, uh, the second that they announced that they were going to be taking these steps, there was a massive backlash from even the media. There was a massive backlash from uh, conservative commentators and politicians and even the state of Israel themselves uh, who have been lashing out and calling this anti-Semitic, which is completely and totally ridiculous. And we're going to get into that. But here are some of the basic outlines. So Israel's prime minister threatened severe consequences after Ben and Jerry said it would stop selling ice cream on occupied Palestinian land. Israel has 250 plus illegal settlements in the occupied West Bank and has displaced over 750 Palestinians in 2021 to build more, rights group says. So first thing you have to understand about this, uh, first and foremost, before the accusations of um, uh, anti-Semitism uh, we get to, but Ben and Jerry's was founded by two guys who are both Jewish. Okay, so first and foremost, how are you going to be calling these people anti-Semitic when they are literally Jewish themselves? Um, but beyond that, uh, Ben and Jerry's, I mean, they're talking about only uh, reducing or eliminating their sales after this contract period ends, eliminating their sales in occupied Palestinian territories. So regions of Palestine that are being illegally, under international law, occupied by the state of Israel, okay? So they're not even banning all of the products to Israel itself. They have a different plan that they set up, and they talked about this in their uh, uh, official statement here, so I'll go ahead and read it. Ben and Jerry's will end sales of our ice cream in the occupied Palestinian territories. We believe it is inconsistent with our values for Ben and Jerry's ice cream to be sold in the occupied Palestinian territory. Uh, we also hear and recognize the concerns shared with us by our fans and trusted partners. We have a long-standing partnership with our license who manufactured ben and, uh, manufactures Ben and Jerry's ice cream in Israel and distributes it in the region we have been working to change this and so we informed our license uh, licensee that we will not renew the license agreement when it expires at the end of next year although ben and jerry's will no longer be sold in the occupied palestinian territories we will stay in israel through a different arrangement we will share an update on this as soon as we're ready so basically i mean they're just saying we're no longer going to be uh, supporting by selling our products in a region that you are illegally occupying okay and so th th it shouldn't be anything controversial in any way shape or form but yet uh, here comes the official state of israel uh, uh, Twitter account coming out. New idea for Ben and Jerry's flavor. Fudged this one up. What the fuck? I mean, what are you talking about, dude? This is the, uh, I mean, this is literally the official State of Israel account here, and they're, they're like shit posting about this. I don't really know. It's just, it's childish shit. Uh, childish shit here, but I, you know, I mean, this is a good response. I mean, that's a shitty idea, Israel. Yeah, thank you. And uh, if Ben and Jerry deb debuted that uh, ice cream flavor, then I don't think I would purchase it. I might even take my business elsewhere. So I think these guys are spot on. Um, and this is just weird that the State of Israel, their official Twitter account, is like tweeting about this and, and shit posting in this way. But in addition to that, you also had the uh, head of the uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs in Israel, saying Ben and Jerry's decision represents a shameful surrender to anti-Semitism, to BDS, and to all that is wrong with the anti-Israel and anti-Jewish discourse, of course, in a classic way, conflating those two, anti-Jewish and anti-Israel, uh, uh, anti the state of Israel and their policies are not the same thing. I mean, it's like saying, uh, you know, if you were a, an American Democrat uh, and you go and you criticize the Trump administration, that that means you hate America or any of the other uh, ways that you could dissect that. You know, if you're even a Trump supporter uh, and you say criticisms of Joe Biden, does that mean that you despise the country? No, I mean, obviously not. Nobody would apply this standard. And yet uh, this is the narrative that they want to push out there because they want people to think that criticizing the policies of the government of Israel is anti-Semitic so that they won't do that, okay? And so he continues, over 30 states in the United States have passed anti-BDS legislation, which is completely unconstitutional um, in recent years. I plan on asking each of them to enforce these laws at Ben and Jerry's. They will not treat the state of Israel like this without a response. So it's important and it's kind of low key how he finishes it off there, but I think he kind of gives away his entire hand in that last sentence. He says, they will not treat the state of Israel like this. Okay, notice from that uh, d description that Ben and Jerry's put out, they're only talking about occupied Palestinian territories. So that is not the state of Israel, right? But according to this person, Yair Lapid, he thinks that that is the state of Israel. Why? Because Israel's policies of their illegal settlements are in complete contradiction with international law. And in fact, according to human rights expert uh, in the UN, Israeli settlements amount to war crimes. 
Okay, so essentially what we're talking about, and you, you, we also had this recent report that we talked about in um, uh, coming out from Human Rights Watch, which I'll link in the description below, but a threshold crossed Israeli authorities in crimes of apartheid and prosecution. So really what this boils down to is Ben and Jerry's is saying we're no longer going to support Israel's polici policies of apartheid and genocide and ethnic cleansing and illegal settlements and expansion into Palestinian territories. Now, the response from conservatives and right-wing media and, um, you know, uh, uh, these uh, uh, government officials within the state of Israel, the response is to call that anti-Semitic. So apparently now, if you don't support actual war crimes, according to the experts being committed, if you don't support apartheid, then you are anti-Semitic. So that's the line that they are going to be trying to push in the wake of this. I'm sure we're going to see some freak show uh, conservative politicians coming out and trying to introduce some ridiculous, crazy anti-BDS legislation. But um, understand the dynamic here. I mean, Ben and Jerry's is, is taking the right steps, and I'm glad that they're taking these steps because we really do need more companies to get involved in this and more companies be willing to stand up and uh, take a firm stand because this isn't something that should be controversial, right? It's an apartheid, it is an ethnic cleansing, and um, if you're taking a neutral stance in this time, then you are taking the side of the oppressor.